How's it going, Katanning? Today is one of my favorite days of the year, one of the most exciting days of the year. Each year we track how much improvement has happened in the residential districts of our city, and today we see the results for 2021. This whole process actually started in December of last year, so we're going to take you back in time for just a minute. Good morning, Katanning. Very exciting day today. We're doing our fourth annual property survey. So we're going to see today how much difference have we made in 2021 in the residential districts of Katanning. Now, when I say how much difference we've made, I mean Summer is Serve, I mean Habitat for Humanity, and I mean all the residents of Katanning who have worked on their homes throughout the year, who have made investments and improvements to better uh, their place, which in turn betters the entire neighborhood. Got a special guest on today's survey, uh, John from Habitat for Humanity. Um, he's still, you know, getting his feet wet, but he's definitely, uh, they're already moving the ball forward as far as Armstrong Habitat for 2022. So it's pretty cool to see what's happening there. Uh, I thought this would be cool to, I mean, I just like John, so I just have a day to hang out with him is pretty awesome. But at the same time, uh, this should be hopefully very valuable for him as well. As we go around, uh, hopefully it'll spark some ideas for Habitat as well as uh, our projects too. We uh, did a pretty good chunk so far. I have to admit, I'm a little bit discouraged. We have we have several that went to zeros, not nearly as many as uh, as we would like to see. And we have many properties that we added to the list. Some that seem to have fresh damage and some that we just missed, um, or I shouldn't say we. John's not involved in the missing part uh, because, well, he will be from here on out, but I missed them. <laughs> Got to juice up the laptop and also need a little, uh, little coffee action. So it's not as bad as I thought. There's actually, we have 10 properties that are zeros on the map. I'll show you what that means here in just a little bit. So uh, we, we're not even halfway done probably. So uh, that's pretty, that's actually more encouraging than I thought. I think I was just very discouraged because of how many properties we had to add, but let's keep going. John's getting some crokinole instruction from Mike. Mike wasted me on crokinole, but I beat him at chess, which is the game that really matters, so. That one's John's, one of the worst houses in Katanning. When's it coming down, John? It should be coming down next spring. We're gonna put a new house there, so. Nice. Yeah, anything will be an improvement. Beautiful. <laughs> yes, anything would be an improvement for sure. Another batch of new siding, looking really good. All right, so I think John and I are done for today. I'll have to get the final numbers, but we're gonna finish this another day. We got about two thirds of it done. It only took us like three hours though. So first year, this took probably like a 20 hour project to get it all together. Um, it keeps getting shorter every year. So I think the next year was like eight hours it took us. And then I think I was like seven hours-ish. And I think this is gonna be like five to six hours. We do the whole town, pretty awesome. Of course, it helps that there's been less houses on the list every year too. So we would expect it to take less each time. Now, since that point in time, we had quite a bit of snow that actually stuck to the ground. Not great for finishing our property survey, but the weather is changing. It is beautiful out. And today we're gonna finish our survey. We've got about 45 houses left on the list. I'm finishing them all this morning. We're gonna tabulate our results and we're gonna talk about next steps forward. My daughter and I went and did like the downtown area last night and now today, I still have Clay Hole left and then a couple of the just little minor streets around the city. So see what we got.
Yeah, South Jefferson Street here making a real case for most improved street of the year. They got four different properties that went from some kind of score to zero. Uh, plus, you have the uh, Villa Rosa turning into the Mexican restaurant. Uh, you have the other building there. They, they tore off the, it used to be like one of the most blighted properties on the street. Uh, they tore the whole second floor off of it. They're completely redoing it. Um, you have the properties that I've been working on, which are completely redone on the, almost completely redone on the inside at this point. And you'll see the facades change here pretty soon. Uh, yeah, South Jefferson, big improvement this year. Nothing really looks different down here, but if you remember Habitat and uh, Living Water Church, we're, we're planning and plotting. We're gonna be doing some work in this area, as long as it all comes together by then, but I'm sure it will. Seeing moving trucks and dumpsters and all of this, there's still still progress happening, even in winter, and I'm hoping like this is gonna be another awesome year ahead. I really think it will be, like there's so much momentum right now. Check out this beautiful house. They uh, completely redid this thing over the last year. New roof, new siding, new porch, paint. Literally did everything. I think it looks fantastic. Not a whole lot of change on East High Street and Queen Street, but another that's another area we're targeting. Would love to see some movement on the brickyard someday. Just one of those like cool properties. It's like nestled down in a valley there. It just seems like uh, underutilized piece of land. At the scene of the big fire here, I uh, did get some updates on this. It looks like all the insurance money is starting to coordinate, so we're hoping that uh, there'll be some real movement on the cleanup here over the next few months. It'll be really exciting to kind of watch the transformation of that property. I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but, um, but I, I really believe it's going to be a great thing. Just a couple streets left. Some real progress happened on Rebecca, including this one they just like beautifully redone. Looks like they're just doing the last touches now. Got some massive houses on this street, but man, that one looks so good. Redid the columns, all the beautiful stonework on some of these houses. I just, I love doing this. I love going and seeing all the, all the things happening and then just so much neat architecture in this town. Last little neighborhood here. Okay, clay hole's done. Got the last couple on Vine Street here, and that's a wrap, friends. All right, so here's where it gets really fun. Uh, those of you that have been watching the channel for a long time, you'll remember this from a few years ago. We did our first property survey of the whole town. Uh, those of you that aren't familiar with the system, uh, you can go check out some of the previous videos. I'll put the links to all three of the last ones in the description. But to just give you the Cliff Notes version, we go through and rank every single house on a scale of one to five for uh, any, any damage that is on the house, you know, whether it be something large or something small. And so one uh, being the least amount of damage and then five being the most amount of damage. We also rank them for how simple it is to fix. Uh, one being the most difficult to fix and five being the least difficult. Uh, the reason that we do it that way is because like our dream house would be a 10. Uh, it'd be something for like summer to serve that we could complete in a day. So that would be a house that has a lot of damage on it um, that you know isn't visually a ple pleasing at all so that's a five and then something that is really simple to fix uh, now those houses are unicorns they just don't exist but over time we have had nines and eights and sevens and so when we're going to try to find people to help that's where we start with the ones that where we can have the biggest impact with the least amount of work so after we've gone through the entire town, we end up with a spreadsheet that looks like this. And you can see on the spreadsheet, uh, ones that are yellow here are houses that were improved. Uh, green are houses that went from some kind of score all the way to zero, meaning they're completely done. And then we also have some red ones on here that would be houses that actually got worse in some meaningful way over the course of the previous year. So you'll see here at the bottom, we have our results 2019. There were 30 zeros uh, with 52 houses noticeably better. Uh, 2020 was 22 zeros and 51 noticeably better. And this year, uh, very good numbers yet again, 25 zeros and 45 noticeably better houses. We did have five that were noticeably worse. And this year, actually, when John and I went around, uh, we were a lot more scrutinizing uh, than we were in the past. And I think John helped me also find some that uh, we didn't have in the past too. So we actually added about 29 houses to the list this year. 
Uh, we added only 13 last year. So uh, we're continuing to get better at this over the course of time. <laughs> and so that's part of it too. There's, there's still a learning curve, but overall um, I'm trying to learn, you know, how do we utilize this data in the best way possible? And how do we continue to um, make progress in a way that is efficient and effective for the whole community? But overall, I'm really pleased if we add up the improvements over the first three years, it's a cumulative improvement of 32.14%. And so that's a huge number. And so almost a third of all all of the uh, blight in the entire town is gone in the course of just three years. And so we're on a pace for about nine years uh, to have this totally and completely done. Uh, but I don't know if that's ever, you know, going to be a feasible goal. Like you're always going to have some problems. And like we saw recently with the fire, you know, there are going to be things that happen that cause new damage around town. But that being said, if we had an 80% improvement over the course of eight years or something like that, I think that is a uh, job well done, mission accomplished, and move on to the next thing. The other cool thing about having all of that data is we can actually map it as well. So if we look here, I, I've learned that I need to add all of the added houses into like the original numbers as well. Uh, so we actually have about 320 houses on the original list. And uh, as of right now for 2022, uh, we have 237 houses. So that's already a massive improvement. But if we take a closer look at the map, we can really see the difference that's being made. Let's look at a couple different neighborhoods here that we've really focused on a lot. Uh, the first one, the two years ago, we focused on this section of uh, North Grant Avenue, and then we also focused on this section of Wick City, uh, the very furthest north end of town. And if we toggle and we turn, we have right now turned on our starting point for this year, 2022, and the whole cumulative map. And so if we turn off the cumulative map, we'll be able to see the change that's been made. And you can see all of those houses disappearing, some houses changing color, going from a square of a five to a three. Uh, and so that's pretty awesome. If we go down to Wilson Avenue, we can see an even bigger change. Look at this neighborhood. This is just a two block section uh, around the YMCA and around the, um, the old high school. And look at the massive change that's happened here in just two years. Wow. Like how many houses are disappeared off there? I'm not sure, but it is a big, big number. And that's an area that we've really focused on a lot with Summer of Serve. Habitat for Humanity has really focused a lot of energy on. And they're not done yet. So uh, they're going to have a lot more impact there. And I'm sure that we will as well. Let's take a look at one more. This is the bigger neighborhood um, kind of surrounding our church right here. Uh, this would be on either side of Union Avenue. Uh, we're planning to work in this area down here, which would be Queen Street. And we're planning to work down here in Clay Hole as well. So if we turn on our old map, you can see all those houses reappear and disappear. There's already been big changes um, in the section right around our church. And also this section, a lot of private investment that's happened down here on Chestnut Street, Rebecca, Maple, that whole area of Katani. And then you can see up here in Clay Hole and um, Queen Street, not a lot of change over the last three years. And so that's what the map allows us to do. It allows us to see those sections of town, see what's being changed and see where we need to go next. And so that's why we're trying to focus our efforts on those areas next year. And then the following year, who knows, it might be different. Maybe we'll make a massive impact in Clay Hole and Queen Street and we'll be able to move on to a new area of town or we'll revisit an area that we worked on before. So that cumulative map is one big improvement over last year's map and the year before's map. And another one that I'm going to mention to Catanning Borough, I'm actually planning to present this to them at a council meeting. Uh, I'm calling it the list of fives. And so the list of fives are the, the houses that have the most damage in town. A lot of them are abandoned. A lot of them have had very obvious code enforcement issues that have gone um, un, undocumented for many, many years. And so if the borough would just focus on that list of fives, it's only 36 houses, but those houses make up 26% of the total damage that's on our list. And so just imagine if Catanning Borough could take care of the list of fives, and if we could take care of a lot of the other things, you know, we'd be able to meet in the middle and we could do this twice as fast. So I'm going to submit this to Catanning Borough, my list of fives. They can take a look at it, uh, decide what they want to do with it. But my thought to them, my, my goal to, to pitch to them was going to be just do two a month. 
if they could do two a month for codes enforcement and have uh, an impact on 24 of the most blighted properties in Katanning, we could make a huge difference together. They might be able to make a 10% impact by themselves. And if we could make another 10% impact, we'd be able to do twice as much in 2022 as we have in years in the past. So there's that. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, and I think like the big takeaway here, it's working. And since it's working, we must keep going. It's going to be a great year, my friends. Uh, if you're not subscribed, this would be a great time to do so. And you can join us on the journey of, uh, of turning our town around and helping it become even greater than it already is. Have a blessed day, friends. See you in the next one.